Hey, How to Wrench fans. We are going to make a quick video here on these transmission snap rings. If you didn't know, they're actually directional. There's even been lawsuits and deaths of people putting these in backwards and cause the transmission to lock up. So watch this video so you can learn how to install these correctly. And then we started out in uh, timestamps. So a lot of the videos you can jump around and get right to the information you want. And then we even started adding captions so you can pick your language. Enjoy the video. From HowToWrench.com. And we just got done inspecting this transmission for our Moto Gymkhana bike. We've got some fun videos that are going to be coming out on that. But what we're actually doing is, is building a GSX-R 750. It's going to have a, a single transmission speed, just first gear, and the ability to take it out of gear. I was teaching my buddy Kenny here who it's going to be his motorcycle about, you know, some things about transmissions. And as we looked into it, it wasn't right. And then the next one wasn't right. And I saw Kenny's eyes kind of go, oh, are we sure? And so, well, you know what? Let's just go to the manual. Like, the manual is always our source of truth. So let's get in here, Kenny. Kind of tight. We'll talk about a, a few different things we saw. So as we were taking it apart, you remember where we were, I was pointing out these holes and talking about how we want to line the holes up. Remember we're talking mm -hmm. about that, yep. right? So I'll just take a look at this. I'll pop this one off and just use it for an example here. If this were the large diameter that would fit over here, when I slide that on, I'd want those holes to line up. Okay, that's going to be important. And you can see here in the manual, they even call it out. They talk about, you know, making sure those holes line up. And what happens there, this bushing doesn't slide back and forth. The gear slides, uh, th this bushing has a freewheeling gear like this, okay? So the one we took this off of, this sits in free wheels, okay? So this is just spins on here, okay? We're gonna lock it in with this gear to lock it to a fixed gear, but that spins. So what we want is when we feed the oil through the transmission here and it comes out that hole, we want it immediately to line up with that hole so that it can lubricate the gear as needed, okay? There's clearances in here and it's gonna eventually get around there, but I was kind of telling Kenny here, that this is where a lot of people kind of get lucky with motorcycles, ATVs, power sports, transmissions. If they don't get rode hard enough or abused, they might not ever see the problem uh, or for miles to come. But if it even gets used slightly hard or whatnot, and we need that oil there, that oil's demanded there, we are gonna have a problem, okay? So that's one thing to think about, okay? The next thing that we wanna think about that's really crucial. There have been uh, recall campaigns from different manufacturers where they got this wrong. I know of cases where there were lawsuits where people even lost their lives. This is a big deal. And as we were taking this transmission apart, these snap rings, get in here a little closer, they matter. They have, let's see if the, you could tell me if this shows up there, Kenny. There's a, what we call the rounded edge or the stamped edge. Yeah, you can kind of see it's rounded. And then if you look at this side here, you're gonna have what you call the sharp edge. You see that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here's why it matters. Zoom out a little bit. Okay. When you have your sliding gear, so this gear in particular is gonna engage a gear set here or it's gonna engage a gear set there. And you can see there's two grooves, so there's two snap rings on here. And this is what a lot of people do wrong. They just start stacking everything on here and building up the transmission, grabbing a snap ring and throwing it on there. But the problem is you need to flip directions, as I'm gonna explain here in a second, on which way it goes. The same shaft does not have everything the same direction. And that's what really throws people off. So you get some right, some wrong. What's weird about this transmission is both of them are wrong, right. the side-by-sides. And I challenge Kenny, hey, which way do you think this needs to go? So we're like, okay, let's grab the manual and prove it. So let's do that. So what you're gonna see here in the manual is you're gonna see where it shows sharp edges to the outside, right? And it shows the thrust going that direction, okay? So let's think about what they mean by thrust. So the thrust means this gear coming over and hitting that wall, if you will, which is this snap ring and stops its travel. So that snap ring says, nope, no further. The shift drum, the shift fork and everything are all part of this, but when you bend shift forks, so you have bad shift drums and things are allowed to go too far where they should. Worried about that, huh? Yeah. In the, yeah. I don't want to drop it either. So there, there's a lot of factors that line all this up, but here's why this is important, okay? So let's see if we can explain this in the video. The sharp edge needs to be on this side when we move 
this direction and the sharp edge needs to be on this side when we move that direction. Here's why. I'm, I'm gonna do this the correct way, okay? So the sharp edge this way, these edges in here that are cut with the, the tool on the lathe are razor sharp, right? Like you could feel how sharp they are. So when you have a sharp edge to a sharp edge, you could sit and push on that all day long and it creates that physical stop really nice. If you use the round edge, okay, what'll happen is that inner ID, since it's got a ramp on it now, will actually allow it to creep up and come off and dislodge and come off the shaft. Right. And now if this snap ring is allowed to come over here, this gear is gonna try and lock in to something else. And then what you have on a constant mesh transmission is anytime these can't be secured exactly where they need to be, that's where you're gonna get two sets of gears trying to lock at the same time. That's what locks up the rear wheel because these are directly connected to the output shaft, to the sprockets, to the final drive, doesn't matter, whatever it is. And if it doesn't stay where it needs to be and the shift drum doesn't know this is going on, right? It doesn't know that snap rings popped out. So it's telling this shift fork, hey, let's lock in this gear set the shift drum is still turning. This shift fork is going over. It's supposed to stop. It doesn't stop. It allows those gears to, to touch and lock into the other one. Boom, you got to lock up rear wheel. Wow. So it matters, man. It matters. Why did this person get lucky? I can't tell you. You know, did it get built and then put in storage and not road? I don't know. I don't know any of those things. But my friends, read your service manuals. I think Suzuki did a decent job right here reminding you in the area of the manual. My favorite, favorite go-to manual. I don't think I have one here. I don't have a copy in the new space we just moved into. I have an electronic copy. The Honda Common Manual, my favorite manual ever. The, the last version, I think it's like 700 pages. I have another transmission video where I go in and show you how to take these all off, how to rebuild the transmission, how to line all this stuff up, and some other, you know, kind of unique things on transmissions, you know, what these little bearing pins are for, all that. We got it here, how to wrench. Anyway, Kenny and I are having some fun, proving a point, wanted to go service manual to prove to him that I wasn't, uh, you know, making jokes or going the wrong way. So, <laughs> anyway, stay tuned. We're gonna do a lot of fun stuff with this bike. This Moto, Moto Gym kind of bike is going to be really unique. You probably haven't seen a transmission before that's going to look something like this. Throw this baby together real quick here. I have never done this before either, so this is my first time. And crazy uh, idea Kenny found on the, the good old internet. But this uh, this will be our transmission. <laughs> and that is probably going to look really weird to some people to see... You know, a uh, three-quarter liter bike, GSXR 750, with only uh, one gear. And we're this, thinking we're going to be putting welds on some holes there too, maybe, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we could talk about that a little bit since we're in here. So, you know, in a previous video, we talked about the oil pathway. And it, you, you have to know how everything gets fed with oil. But it comes through the engine case. It feeds this side. It goes this way to get to this bearing. And then that's the, the end point. The problem is we got these little holes in here that are dumping oil for the shift forks and for those spinning gears that I talked about, like this one, okay? We need something to oil that. Well, what we're afraid of, what we don't know, and we're open to comments on this, is that now that there's not that minimal clearance around there, kind of think about putting your finger over the end of a garden hose and controlling that pressure. We don't know is it gonna dump too fast? Kind of curious about the whole thing. This should get enough splash lubrication where it wouldn't matter. My biggest concern are the bearings, the supportive bearings. Right. And then uh, these two bearings get fed out of the engine case and go here. It looks like it feeds this, but it doesn't. It bypasses around, comes into this bearing, feeds through the center, then that's how this bearing gets its oil. So we got some figuring out to do some of the you know, uh, worldly Moto Gymkhana people you've talked to said that they plugged the holes. Yeah, that was what one person mentioned was uh, this me not knowing what that even meant until we're getting here and it's starting to make sense, so. Yeah. <clears throat> this is going to be fun. We're going to have some fun no matter what. So we definitely got some stuff to figure it out. We should weigh all that too. I mean, it's a chunk of weight yeah. that we're taking out of there. Yeah, so basically everything in that box, right? Yeah. Wow. This is it. This is like, we're going to go the route to put new bearings on, even spacers, of course, seals, things like that. But And then it was kind of funny.
We said if you want to, you know, kind of zoom in here, I would have actually replaced this gear. There's a little chip on there. Actually, it's on, you know, I, well, not every one, but it's on at least three of them that I saw. Mm -hmm. But since we're not engaging into here, this side's fine. So first gear was fine. Right. And I, I don't know without putting it back together and determining would that be second gear. Just because it's next to it doesn't mean that's second gear. Sometimes it right. bounces the ratio around. But whatever that one is, there were chunks out of it. She got banged together. All right, my friends, that's it for this video. Make sure and like, share, subscribe, stay tuned. This is going to be a fun project. Uh, and have a back and forth Q&A session with other members as well. We're super excited about that. And with the member channel it's going to really make it more intimate we're going to be able to bring that back into more of a community instead of all the yahoos out there that are just causing trouble and being idiots this community has always been about helping each other and getting those answers to the questions we need i mean you got to remember i love youtube too when i want to learn something it's quite often one of my first go-to places to get information or to learn something that i'm trying to do so we love that we can do this for you as well and we just want to make this a community that is more attentive so we want to be more relationship focused that's a big thing of the memberships the other thing is uh, YouTube does this I think it's kind of funny but we're doing the emojis so if you're a new member it's gonna be a green one we kind of went along the lines of like training does in most certification programs bronze is your entry level uh, silver is your middle of the road and then gold is your top certified but we added one more we added a red one just to say hey thanks for all the love after you've been here for a while so for all you that love that kind of stuff it's there for you what else are you gonna get with this what you're gonna get is really honestly in, in my opinion it's really a way just to say thank you we've tried really hard over the years to figure out creative ways to not beg if you will but to try and encourage and remind people that hey I, I got a full-time job like I've always done this on my own buck all these expenses are my own as I move to this new location Phoenix it's really expensive we got a building insurance you know it, we got everything so it costs a lot to be able to do all this and we really do need your help to offset some of that so this is a way for you to really easily just say thank you and create that you know like I said that deeper relationship with us as well to get the answers that you want and you need so with that being said I hope this has caught your attention I hope you thought man that's really a great idea Look at the options below and hit that join button. It'll tell you what tiers. You can figure out what works best for you and what attracts you. We are going to get back at it. We're super excited about this. We're already going to start moving forward, making content that's member only. So those videos we were just talking about. But my friends, whatever you're doing, be safe. I hope that you're working on something that's making you smile or that you're getting through it or that's making you money. So we're going to get back at it. But as always, make it a great day and keep...